musical alchemy with uh, red sulfur and buckethead. Things, what you're trying to do with silver is you polish the silver so that the image become clear, becomes clearer. And if you don't polish the, uh, the silver enough, it will get black spots. Um, black spots is the, um, is the moment where sulfur begins to work on silver. That is when uh, you're n moving out of cool reflection and suddenly things become hot. So the thing about silver is to keep your cool. When you lose your cool, it turns black. So you constantly, these images are going to excite you and these images are going to turn you on and all that kind of stuff. But you have to keep the silver attitude of keeping a bit of distance and letting them be present in a space of their own so that they can be in the mirror world, in the, in the world of the mirror image. And um, so that we can move into that world of the mirror image that is a cool lunar world. And so that through the silver we move into a lunar landscape. Right? And then everything becomes pure imagination. So we're moving out of the physical world into the world of pure imagination. But you constantly have to keep polishing because the imagination will constantly try to pull you into action. Right? And the moment that the imagination pulls you into action, then the mirror turns black. So you can't see anymore. You can't reflect anymore. Right? Now play that. So start with the polishing. Now go to a moment where it turns black, where the passion takes over, the passion takes over entirely. And you can't see anything anymore. And now move back to finding your cool. Find your cool, find your cool, find your cool, find your cool. And I'll polish again in the cool. And sense how the image begins to refine now. Feel the refinement of the image, and in the refinement of the image, we're moving into another world. We're moving into the world of pure imagination. So, yeah, now we're in the world of pure imagination. Move around in that world of pure imagination. Everything is image. Oh, and now you're making a mistake. Now you're falling in love with an image. Feel how you're falling in love with an image. And it makes you act. Feel how it makes you act. So you're pulled out of the world of imagination, you begin to act. Feel the acting, feel the acting, and now it turns black. You can't see anything anymore. You've gone into passion. Feel the passion, feel the passion, feel the passion. Feel how it destroys the mirror. It destroys the mirror now. Move back into cool, move back into cool, move back into cool, move back into cool, move back into pure imagination, sense pure imagination, feel pure imagination, the mirror image, the world of the mirror image, where everything is purely imaginal, that's the landscape of the moon, so now we're on the moon, we're on the moon, the moonlight, the moonlight, the shining of the moon. This is a land of madness, lunacy. Feel the lunacy. Feel the lunacy. Stay with the lunacy. Stay with the lunacy. Stay with the lunacy. Feel the lunacy. Stay with the lunacy. is coming in. Now, move out of the moon and 
start to bury, to bury all this in the earth. We're going to move to yellow. So it's now being put in the earth. All these images are now put in the earth. And it begins to fester. to ferment, feel the fermentation, let it ferment, let it ferment, let it ferment, feel the fermentation, feel the fermentation, stay with the fermentation, let it ferment, and the whole body begins to ferment, feel the fermentation throughout the body, beginning to ferment, beginning to ferment, it's fermenting more, feel the fermentation, feel the fermentation, feel it fermenting, and then it turns into action. turning red. Feel it's become golden. Feel how it's now a mixture of the image and the action. It is silver and gold mixed. That's called the mystical marriage. Feel the silver and the gold mixed. The moonlight and the sunlight mixed. Daytime and night existing at the same time. Day and night together. And now let any music emerge that wants to come out. Day and night together. I don't know if, if I can make it all the way to the amusement park, though I think it's an absolutely fantastic idea and there's many possibilities with all this electronic music and the electronic uh, video and everything to create virtual amusement parks with rides and all those kind of things. What I see first is us trying to make music that comes directly from 14th century alchemy. What I am interested in is to bridge the world between the time when we were still in a state of participating with the world, which was alchemy. They were participating in the metals. They were participating in the materials that they were working. Before we moved into the world of objectivity, which started around the 17th century, which is what my novel Red Sulphur is all about. And so I'm interested to go back to that time of participating, where we were participating in everything, where we were participating in all the world and where we were participating in nature, and then we became separate from nature, then we became separate from the world, then we started to look objectively at the world, and I would like to get back to that time before, that time of participation, and really sense that and see what it does to music when we get back to that point of participation, when the world makes the music when the music make, creates itself, when it is no longer that the music, musician makes the music, but the musician becomes the conduit in which the music self-manifests. 
So that's what I'm very interested in. I'm interested to work with you because you're the greatest musician I know. Well, the, the, the notion is that um, there are no dead things. In alchemy, the notion is that everything is alive. It's like in alchemy, everything is biology. There is no such thing as physics because there is uh, always uh, an interaction between between the world, it can be a tree, it can be metal, it can be a stone, there's always an interaction between that and uh, the person who's interacting with it, which is, in our case, the alchemist. And that communication that is set up, that creates the aliveness, and the aliveness exists between the alchemist and the material. And so something happens where it's a mutuality of the material, the material has its own intentions, the material has its own values, the material has its own uh, qualities, and these qualities are brought out by the alchemist together with the material, and then these qualities begin to exist in a world of imagination. And they start to move together, but it is an embodied imagination, so it's an imagination that immediately feeds back into matter, it feeds back into the material, and as it feeds back into the material, the material becomes more and more alive, and that, to us, is magic. Since I've been with you, I look at the strings of the guitar now as being, in every, in every area of the guitar too, not just, because you're talking about place, there's a word you called it, like an area, if you're in a place, it, it has a... A spirit of yeah, place? A spirit yeah. of place, that was yeah. it. So if I'm not being here, is different than being here. I'm starting. Oh, you're pointing to the different, uh, the different section of um, the fretboard. The fretboard, yeah. And it feels like there's different worlds in this area than there oh, is up in here. That's very interesting. And then yeah. in the metal of the string, I sense. A lot, I look. I just try to interact with the metal and think. How do I get out of the way so it can do its what, own thing? Yeah, what, yeah. Through what you teach. Well, that that's that's very important because uh, the each each string has its own vibration, right? And so um, uh, one of the notions is that everything vibrates. We are living in a world that that vibrates everywhere. Light is vibration. Sound is vibration. Everything is vibration, and. Um, so vibration is actually the life of the metal of the of these metals. So they 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 vibrate uh, as you play with them in different places. They will vibrate differently. So you live in a different vibratory space when you're uh, at one end of the fretboard than if you're at the other end of the fretboard. And so since you can now feel these different places, you get into the spirit of the place of that particularly vibratory pattern and as you enter into into it and you move to the side then that particular vibratory pattern of that particular place on the fretboard can start to self-manifest and if it starts to self-manifest you just have to follow it yeah you, you say that i'm playing music yeah. i say i'm playing ideas i'm moving around in the world of ideas and ideas are very much alive to me ideas to me are living beings and I communicate with these living beings, and these living beings then give me their inspiration. But it's not just that I'm doing that myself, but this has been done for thousands of years. Plato already did it, the Neoplatonists. So I am very interested in how, over the last 2,000, 3,000 years, we have been interacting with ideas as living beings, and how these ideas slowly come and self-manifest, and they self-manifest through music. Music was one of the first things Pythagoras, uh, the Pythagoreans were very interested in how the music of the spheres um, would encompass the cosmos. And so the music has something cosmic to it. And I'm not a musician, so I can bring in ideas and I can bring in the life of ideas and the vibration of ideas, but you can make it into music. That's why I love working with you. Part of the problem that we're not in a state of participation anymore is that if you cut down a tree and you're not participating in it, you can cut down as many trees as you want. If you're participating in the life of the tree, then cutting down, you can only do it by via ritual because you know that you are ending a life. 
and um, or you're changing a life and um, since you're participating you can feel that so every time that you do something like that you have to ritualize it and when you kill an animal you have to ritualize it so that you somehow make it okay that you start to eat the animal because you're participating in that world if you are um, not doing that then you can just send everybody to an abattoir and just kill them all because they're things they're objects and that is something that really came into place in the 17th century where what the, that before that there were not things, there were beings. And then as of the 17th century, the notion of thing came. And then what we are calling um, reality means, the literal translation of reality is thingliness. Because res means thing. And reality is made from the word res. So it's thingliness. So it's the thingliness of the things around us that make, that make them distant from us. And if we can participate in their world, then they stop being things, but they become beings. And so then we live in a world of beings. Then we're surrounded by beings, not by things. And that is a whole different way of being in the world. Of course, our rational self, which got really sharpened in the 18th century during the Enlightenment, our rational self will tell us that well, this is all nonsense because it doesn't stand to reason. But they, we only look at human reason and not at the reason that is all over, all over the cosmos. There's reason everywhere. But it's a different kind of reason. And so I think it's very important to get to the point where we begin to participate in the world again so that we cannot just destroy it. But if we destroy something, we have to acknowledge through participation that something has died. You know, like the way they cut the trees now, it looks so horrible. Like they look like they're just being cut, mm -hmm. you know, like, they look dismembered or something. Yeah, yeah, because they're things. Yeah. They're it, not beings. It hurts to see it to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean... Yeah. And so um, uh, people who are rationalists would say, oh, you're just making this stuff up. And uh, because rationalists are the ones who know what's real, right? And... Um, and a person who knows what is real is actually a person who's deluded because um, only a deluded person knows exactly what's real. Um, any other person has doubts. Right? Um, and so when you see a person without doubts, you know a person is in a, in a state of delusion. Um, because if you don't see that there's mystery going on that goes well beyond reason, then you're blind. I think that many of them are blinding, many of these lights, but I don't know um, much about... I, I think that the light is getting sharper and brighter and more blue. And um, so the, the slow disappearance of incandescent light must have an influence on us because that's more yellow. So I think that we're moving, and I don't know if it's true, but it seems as if we're moving more to the blue end of the spectrum. Um, and from the red end of the spectrum to the, slowly to the blue end, and that's, that's cold light. So um, I think that we're moving into um, a more lunar sphere where it's cold. And it's, a, it's another kind of light, that moonlight. But it's very, very bright moonlight. So I don't know what it does to the brain. I have no idea. I just feel like it's soulless, like a soulless feeling. Mm. Mm -hmm. And when you say soulless, what do you feel? Um, it, it, it just feels... It doesn't feel warm, it, like it... Uh, Can you play it?
Can you play cold light? Can you play the difference between cold light and warm light? a big difference. Mm -hmm. The bigger project that we're working that we're working on is to take a long alchemical text and set it to music. Um, and so uh, we would set um, we would begin with the different temperatures and how um, how each different temperature has a different atmosphere and then you would play the atmospheres of the particular temperatures and then we would be working on all the different vessels and how each vessel has a different sound and what it is like when an alchemical process has taken place in a particular vessel and um, then we slowly move into the general transmutation process from raw to refined to something that is new uh, something that hasn't existed before and um, I, I was thinking that eventually we could create something like an um, alchemical opera where where the texts are existing texts from alchemy especially from uh, a compendium of uh, alchemical knowledge that was written in the 15th century it's called the Rosarian Philosophorum and take texts from the Rosarian Philosophorum and have then become music as these texts are induced into your playing. So we'll see where we get.